Hobbs in America is the embodiment of US patriotism. He stands for truth, justice, and the American way. Wait, isn't that someone else? Endowed with strength from his super soldier serum and equipped with a near indestructible shield, Cap is a cold-blooded killer. Hey, that's something else he's got in common with Superman. Because if real, his shield would be lethal. Cap's shield is made from the fictional substance Vibranium, and as Ultron said, it's the most versatile metal on the planet, and they used it to make a frisbee. The key property of Vibranium is that it can absorb all vibrations within its vicinity and any kinetic energy directed towards it. That energy goes into its bonds, making the metal even stronger. Quite how that works, I'm not particularly sure, but its vibrational absorbing ability is what turns what would otherwise be the ultimate defensive item into a lethal weapon. No, not that sort of lethal weapon. Let's explore what would happen if you were to encounter Cap's shield. Now, it's not particularly clear how close you have to be for vibranium to start taking vibrational energy, so for the purposes of this video, let's assume you have to be in contact with it. Also, to make the calculations a little bit simpler, just like any good physicist does, I'm going to assume that the human body is entirely made of water. That's not too bad an assumption. 65% of an adult human male is water and only 55% for a woman. And the specific details of water versus any other substance in the body shouldn't affect the numbers all that much. We can work out how much vibrational energy there is in the human body using classical thermodynamics, in particular the equipartition of energy. And it all comes down to the number of degrees of freedom that the molecules have. Think of those as the number of different ways that those molecules can move. It turns out that each molecule at a given temperature has to have the same amount of energy in each degree of freedom. A half times the Boltzmann constant times by the temperature on the absolute scale, or a half kT. Now, liquid water has a total of nine degrees of freedom. The first three are translational modes, that's because the molecules as a whole can move left to right, up and down, and backwards and forwards. Then there are another three rotational modes, because those water molecules can spin around those three directions as well. And finally, and most crucially for our vibranium, there are three vibrational modes. There's the asymmetric stretch, the symmetric stretch, and the scissoring bend. Stop sniggering, you. While our vibranium can take energy from those three vibrational modes, it has to leave the other six untouched. But if you remember, equipartition of energy tells us that all of the degrees of freedom have to have the same amount of energy. If you take it away from the vibrational modes, the other six modes have to compensate and share the rest of the energy out. And since the amount of energy in each degree of freedom is proportional to the temperature, that means you're going to start getting cold. This is bad news for you because as a warm-blooded animal, your thermoregulatory system tries to keep your core body temperature between 36.5 degrees C and 37.5 degrees C. Dropping anywhere below that comfort zone and hypothermia sets in. 28 degrees and below, you've become unconscious, and under 20 degrees C, and you have lost your vital signs. Some chilling facts there. After the shield has absorbed 12.4 megajoules of energy, or the equivalent kinetic energy of an armor-piercing round, you've hit zero degrees C, and freezing is about to kick in. Once you've turned into a solid human popsicle, though, the shield has absorbed an extra two babies worth of TNT. Unless you dosed up on cryoprotectants before coming into blows with Cap, at this point, yeah, you'd be dead. Cell shrinkage and high salt concentrations during freezing usually prevent cells from functioning again after thawing. Assuming Captain America takes you all the way down to just above absolute zero, his shield would absorb the same amount of energy that you get out from burning a cubic meter of natural gas. But he's still not done with you yet. 
even at absolute zero, your frozen body would still have some vibrational energy left. Now, that might sound weird because I said the amount of energy in each degree of freedom is proportional to the temperature on the absolute scale. Zero temperature should mean zero energy, but that doesn't factor in quantum mechanics, in particular Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. As a solid, the molecules in your body are arranged in a perfect crystal lattice structure. In fact, ice has a hexagonal structure. That means that the molecules, each one, will be confined within a certain region of space, call that delta x. Now, at absolute zero, those molecules will be at their lowest possible energy level, but Heisenberg tells us they cannot be completely still. They must have some momentum to satisfy his inequality, delta p. It's the energy associated with this quantum jittery motion that we call zero-point energy, and there'll be one of these for every single degree of freedom each molecule has. If vibranium can indeed absorb all vibrational energy, then it must also absorb this zero-point energy, and the only way it can do that is by breaking up the crystal lattice. That would release a quarter of the energy of a lightning bolt and leave you as 2.7 octillion free molecules. And there's no way of reassembling from that. Avengers. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please do check out some of the other videos I've done. And of course, you can subscribe down there. Cheers.